Oh, we're good. Okay. Good evening, and welcome to the Township Committee meeting of June 9th, twenty twenty. Ms. Borak, can you please call the roll? Committee Men Delcor. Here. Committee Woman Holmes. Here. Committee Woman McCauley. Here. Deputy Mayor Lapani. Here. Mayor Thompson. Here. Administrator Ferreira. Here. Attorney Willard. Here. Attorney Bernstein. Here. Okay. Please join me to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, 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 liberty, justice for all. Justice for all. all right, please be advised that in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, notice of this meeting was made by the posting on the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and the Township website in notifying the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on June 9th, 2020. Members of the public may participate in this meeting via teleconference bridge by dialing into 888-204-5987 and entering access code 2604706. This meeting is also being live streamed on the Township's YouTube channel. First up this evening is approval of the minutes. Um, may I have a motion to approve um, the executive session minutes of December 17th, 2019. I'll move that. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Committee Man Delcor. Yes. Committee Woman Holmes. Abstain. Committee Woman McCauley. Yes. Deputy Mayor Lapani. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Uh, may I have a motion to approve executive session minutes of February 25th, 2020. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Committee Man Delcor. Yes. Committee Woman Holmes. Yes. Committee Woman McCauley. Yes. Deputy Mayor Lapani. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, Stan, I apologize. Uh, I had to miss that meeting. Uh, I may have a motion to approve the executive session minutes of April 14, 2020. So moved. Thank you. What are you second? This is high. Second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you roll call, please. <clears throat> Come in, Delcor. Yes. Come in, Holmes. Yes. Come in, McCauley. Yes. Deputy Mayor Lopani. Yes. And Mayor Thompson. Yes. Um, first off, before we get to committee reports uh, and from our committee liaisons, uh, I wanted to give an opportunity to call up our police chief, McMahon, um, just to talk about a couple of things. Uh, obviously, our country um, has been shaken by the events that happened in Minneapolis, and I felt that it's important uh, because of, uh, we've received numerous emails uh, from the public about concerns about uh, or police department in general, uh, that the police uh, chief takes a minute just to talk about why Hillsboro um, is a little different in terms of what we've been doing here in town. Um, so, Chief, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, yes, we've had numerous inquiries from residents over the last week regarding policing and policy concerns in the wake of George Floyd's death. Uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes to remind the public that we as police officers are also outraged by the unnecessary death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The actions observed and lack of action taken by those officers is contrary to our training and is no way representative of our dedicated men and women here at the Hillsborough Police Department. We pride ourselves on being a professional organization that's committed to protecting and serving all individuals, regardless of race, religion, gender, social, or economic status. We are an accredited police agency recognized for adhering to the best practices in law enforcement. Our policies are governed by the Attorney General's guidelines and our officers are held accountable to the highest standards here. We are fortunate to have a positive relationship with our community and rest assured that we are going to continue to serve you with the utmost professionalism every day. Okay. I, thank you, Chief. I, as I've said in the past, I'll say it again, we should all work to expose racism and demand justice for the murder of George Floyd. Um, and we need to continue to have dialogue in this community uh, and in communities across this country. There, there needs just be more conversations. Uh, and spread a message of kindness and compassion um, throughout. So I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you being open to answer. I saw how many emails you've been answering over the last week. I'm sure you'll continue to do that and to address any concerns that are, are brought before us. So um, on behalf of myself and uh, I believe the entire Township Committee, thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, we do have a resolution on, this, on the agenda later. 
um, to address uh, our, our feelings on racism in general. So uh, if there's any other comments, I, I think we should hold off until to that point, if that's okay with all my colleagues up here. Okay, but if a uh, chief, if you could stick around just in case there's any questions from the public um, later on in the agenda. So thank, thank you, you, Chief. Okay, first up, uh, Kim Nivin Delcor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to thank the Chief uh, for for his comments. I think we're fortunate here in Hillsborough to have such a professional group, and uh, appreciate your your work in trying to heal the community. So thank you for that. Um, you know, it seems like um, we've COVID has taken a uh, a significant back seat, but there's still significant uh, issues. Come in, if you could just talk more into the microphone. Are we dealing with that one or this one? That that one okay. in front of you. It's just that you have to really speak into it. Um, so, thank you. It seems as though we've we've uh, all we've talked about for the last three months is COVID, and I know. The events recently have have certainly put that uh, a bit on the back burner, but there are still some things that I want to make sure our residents are aware of. Um, of course, we continue to provide a social net um, to a safety net for social purposes to our residents, uh, especially those facing financial difficulties. Um, our community assistance network has been providing a significant amount of non-perishable food and toiletries and other um, and other needs to our community. We've been uh, given very generous donations by a number of our business communities, our residents, um, and uh, other locations, uh, you know, other communities. So I just wanted to thank them and let people know that we still have that service available. Our community assistance network is here to provide support for anyone that needs it. Um, and I just wanted to make sure people were aware of that. If anyone would like to take advantage uh, or utilize any of those services, um, you could do so uh, in any manner uh, discreetly if necessary. But uh, you can call the office at 908-369-3880 or through the Social Services Department website. And again, thanks to the many uh, residents and local organizations that have provided donations. And I'd also like to thank Royce Golf Course for their uh, continued partnership with social services in providing meals for a number of our seniors uh, who are housebound with limited capacity to obtain food amid the pandemic. So thank you to all of them and uh, just please know we're, we're still here to help, especially our, our uh, assistance network. Uh, the health department, uh, as you can imagine, has been uh, uh, really working uh, significant hours trying to uh, deal with the uh, pandemic, but there are also other things that uh, still need to be dealt with. Uh, within that is uh, still the, the uh, pet vaccination and rabies, as well as licensing. Uh, so anyone that uh, has any issues with their uh, pet licensing or any vaccinations, you can please uh, reach out to the health department uh, or on the website. And a dog license application or renewal can be found and done directly on the township website. Um, we continue to receive guidance from the state uh, regarding the opening procedures for child care facility summer camp and um, and pool guidance I think today there was actually some um, some positive guidance on on all of those items um, so that uh, the governor made some announcements as if the pool openings would be happening um, summer camps can can go on with a little bit larger population uh, than maybe we thought uh, but for all of those guidelines, you can reach out to the, uh, the health department website um, or the township website has significant information there. So uh, please look into that if you need any of those uh, services. Uh, regarding recycling, uh, we have a uh, recycling update. Um, recycling, obviously, extremely important, but even more effective is reducing the amount of waste that each of us create and also find ways to reduce, uh, reuse as much as possible. Um, finding ways to reduce and reuse is the best way to save natural resources, reduce the amount of material that is dumped in a landfill and save money. On the township website, there is a recycling icon. And you can click on that to, to learn more ways to recycle, reuse, and ultimately consume less. Um, from our recreation department, um, 
We had a rec meeting last week. I know we've been uh, um, trying to figure out what to do with some of the township events. Um, I do have some sad news. Uh, you know, I don't think it's surprising, um, but due to the COVID-19 and the inability to have uh, mass gatherings, at least uh, at this point, um, that would allow us to do it, we are going to um, need to cancel our, or defer uh, our Family Fun Day fireworks. Uh, the music festival that goes along with that, um, that we've uh, scheduled for this year, uh, will be postponed. Uh, we're just not in a position to be able to have those types of events. Uh, certainly the fireworks is something that um, I look forward to with my family every year. I know many families do. I am very hopeful that we will be able to um, reschedule that for some time later in the summer when uh, larger gatherings uh, that would be needed uh, can happen uh, safely for our residents. Uh, we are working with the fireworks company to be able to provide um, uh, a date subsequent uh, to what we had scheduled so that we can still have that, uh, that really uh, wonderful event that we do here in Hillsboro. So more information to come there, but I just wanted to give everyone um, notice that we will be canceling that event. And that was originally scheduled to be held on June 29th, I believe. Pam, June 29th was? Yes. Yeah. Um, as, uh, as I noted a little bit earlier, um, we do have some summer camp uh, information. Uh, so good news came from Trenton uh, that uh, we can have summer camps. Uh, with some restrictions, but we do have summer camps scheduled to open on July the 6th. Uh, more information will be forthcoming regarding our camps and summer programs as it relates to recreation. Um, so we, uh, we do have some uh, availability within our camps. Um, I think uh, many parents are not sure what they're going to do at this point with their, with their children, but uh, anyone that would like to utilize our camps, please let uh, our rec department know, or you can go on the township website uh, under recreation and get more details on the camp program. Uh, additionally, with the lifting of restrictions today and uh, increasing the amount of people that are allowed to gather, we will be opening the dog park uh, along with our skate park out at Ann Van Middlesbrough Park first thing tomorrow morning. So I know that will be a welcome uh, event for many of our uh, kids and residents here in town. Um, so um, uh, the, uh, we, we've unfortunately had to have them closed, but, uh, but with the guidance today, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting those open. I know our, our rec team is, uh, is anxious to get that open as well. Uh, we continue to offer some virtual camps and recreation. So uh, we will have virtual basketball, tennis, soccer, and a music academy. Uh, registration will be starting uh, tomorrow. That's June the 10th at 9 a.m. So please uh, feel free to log on to the website and go and register for those virtual programs. Uh, this is only the beginning of our summer program here in Hillsboro. Uh, we do expect and residents can expect that we'll have both virtual and in-person programs, camps and clinics as the summer moves forward. Uh, we'll certainly provide more information as it becomes available. And as noted, please continue to check the Parks and Recreation website as well as um, the e-newsletter for additional information on recreation offerings. And finally for me, a sustainable update. Um, for the months of February and April 2020, uh, Nikita Agarwal of Girl Scout Troop 60364 as part of her Gold Award project partnered with Hillsborough Township to conduct the Hillsborough Compost Challenge 2020. A digital and in-person outreach was initiated to spread awareness about the importance of composting. Uh, this effort included a green challenge component where 360 Hillsboro households pledged to exceeding the 2.5% population requirement for sustainable Jersey. This accounts for almost one ton of waste that could be removed from every 100 tons disposed. Congratulations to Nikita on her excellent work and Christina Stump for winning the free compost bin. Uh, to learn more about composting, please visit sustainablehillsboro.com. Uh, great little project and um, always nice to get uh, sustainable Jersey uh, accreditation. So thank you to Nikita and for that project. That's all from me, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Committee. And just, uh, I just want to thank uh, the Parks and Rec Committee because I know they worked tirelessly trying to come up with different scenarios where we could have the fireworks, the music fest, et cetera. So, 
Um, I, I am saddened, but I think the governor's announcement today that on July 6th he expects that the most you could gather outside is 500, and we draw several thousands to, to the event. It's, um, it's sad. But again, thank you, Commander Delcor, Committeewoman Holmes, for serving on Parks and Rec, and uh, for the entire committee coming to that decision. Uh, it's sad, but unfortunately it's, it's necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing you mentioned was about the food, our food pantry. I just got done signing a stack of letters that would make a hand cramp. Yeah. So uh, the outpouring of our community has been absolutely amazing. The, the generosity is staggering, and it's, um, it's incredible to see. It really is. If, uh, for those of you that haven't had a chance to come in and see the amount of food and donation that are, are part of, uh, that are in the building here, um, it's a good thing we, we don't have the building open because we don't have space to run certain programs That's because true. we have so many donations in the building. Uh, our community is amazing, and I'm really proud to be part of it. Thank you. Um, committee, uh, committee Board McCauley. Thank you, Mayor. Quick question, though. Is there any update on the Clue game going on in town? Because uh, It's still ongoing. All right. It, well, I'm a big Clue fan, for anybody who <laughs> know me, and I was out walking one of our parks recently and saw a Clue. Hint, hint, for those watching. Um, and I, it was fun. It was fun to just see that. And I think it's a really cool idea that the Parks and Rec Department came up with, too. So if you're out there, I want, I'm curious to know how many people actually solve uh, the Clue game. So maybe we can get an update from you guys later. With that said, thank you uh, for being here tonight, everybody. And I just wanted to give a quick update. Um, so according to NJDOT Policy 346, the township usually has to commit to 25% of electrical costs associated with revision of existing traffic signals, left-hand turns, et cetera. And um, the township requested to install a dedicated left turn arrow on Raider Boulevard a while ago. And I believe the um, collaboration with the engineering department, our police department, and the administrative staff, um, they sent a note to the DOT to revisit the cost sharing of this particular dedicated left turn arrow. And with the information sent um, regarding crash data and uh, traffic turning movement count data for this intersection, the state revisited as such and um, took into consideration this is a, um, a phasing for safety. So as such, they will forgo the township's responsibility to um, uh, take 25% of the electrical costs from the township. And some things like this happen on a daily basis, not always daily, but this is pretty significant. I just wanted to call out um, and say thank you to the collaboration of those departments because any cost savings we can have, certainly to Hillsboro. And I want to say thank you to the state for revisiting that and uh, taking the consideration of it turning into a safety issue. So we will be having left-hand turn signal there. Um, due to the constraints they have at the state level right now, they're not sure of a timeline of when it will be done, but um, they will notify us, but it will be on their list and it will be completed in the earliest possible time frame. So Great. thank you to everybody there. From finance, the township will be issuing uh, the estimated third quarter tax bills. The bills will be a small single sheet and will be uh, for the August payment only. The shop rate credits will be applied to those bills as well. So the Finance Department will be mailing the bills during the week of June 22nd. So you should look into your mailboxes the week thereafter or some days thereafter um, to see what the, uh, if you don't receive them, please call the Finance Department because sometimes the mail isn't quite slow. Uh, I know I'm having trouble getting my mail these days sometimes. So um, the clerk's office, I just wanted to have another reminder that June 16th is the last day to register to vote in the July primary. The primary will be held on July 7th and voting by mail um, the primary is encouraged. All registered Democratic voters will receive a Democratic mail-in ballot with prepaid postage. All registered Republican voters will receive a Republican mail-in ballot, again with prepaid postage. And all registered unaffiliated and inactive voters will receive a mail-in ballot application with prepaid postage. So keep your eyes out for that. To receive the ballot by mail, the application must be received by the county clerk seven days prior to the election. A voter may also turn, return the application in person to the county clerk until election day, but the voted ballot must be returned by 8 p.m. The county clerk cannot accept fax or email copies of an application for vote by mail-in ballot um, unless you're a military or overseas voter, since an original signature is required for that. So an update here, there will be drop boxes located in several locations throughout the county. All voted ballots must be in a drop box, returned to the Board of Elections or postmarked by 8 p.m. On election day. The important to note here, um, 
in-person voting will be via provisional ballot only if you're not familiar with it. Do we have that online at all, Pam, a provisional no, ballot? No, the provisional okay. ballot's not made available online. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's just, you have to fill out the information basically by hand. Unless the voter is visually impaired or otherwise certified uh, as a disability, which requires an accessible voting machine, um, they will have that there for those purposes. But otherwise, if you do visit a polling location, it will be required to vote on a provisional ballot. So a couple of changes there. Um, I think that's it for me this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Many women homes. Good evening. Later on in this agenda, there will be a presentation for the Deer Management Program. As you will see, this program has a very successful track record, and we look forward to working with the commission this year. Just a reminder, there are several Hillsborough farms open and offering okay. services for our community as an additional resource for healthy, natural, and fresh food. For the latest information regarding the Hillsborough farming community, their hours when they're open, please visit hillsboroughbusiness.org and click on the Hillsboro Harvest icon or visit the HBA Facebook page. Um, just a, another reminder that there is still time to complete your census. The census is important because it impacts future planning and funding for the infrastructure, future employment, training, and health care programs. To learn more about the impacts of, of the census or to complete it online, visit the website 2020census.gov. Take a few minutes and complete your census. That's it for me tonight, Pam. Thank you. We have a quick video on the census. Oh, please. Cass, can you see the video? Census rewards everyone living in this country. It's written in the Constitution and comes in a questionnaire that counts everyone who lives at your address on April 1st. The data can be used to inform funding for services like fire stations, schools, clinics, and representation that affect your community. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, looking at our numbers, it looks like, and uh, I apologize, Katie Boone, you might have said this, but we're at 72.3% right now return rate, which is great, but there's seven municipalities still beating us right now in terms of the response, so I'm pretty sure we can get ours up and catch uh, the winner right now, which is Bernard's, which is at 78.4, so I'm confident we can blow past them. So everyone, tell your neighbors, fill out the form. We've already received it. It's easy to do. It takes seconds, so please, please fill out the census. Uh, Deputy Mayor Lapani. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a few things. Uh, some ongoing uh, information from the building department. Uh, this one, recent, they have recently launched their SDL portal. The, through this, you can check the status of your application permit, see inspection requests, see other permit information uh, with regards to your application. You go to the www.sdlportal.com and start utilizing its convenient features today obviously will allow you to, to monitor the status of all your applications and your permits. Uh, the engineering department is just giving us a quick update on our 2020 paving program. Uh, due to the COVID situation, we put a, a big uh, use of the lack of traffic, so most of all of our projects that were slated for 2020 are already completed. Uh, Willow Road Phase 1 between Amal Road and Valinor Drive is completed. Andrea Drive completed. Hillsborough Road between Bypass and Willow Road is completed. Brooks Boulevard completed. Wurtsville Road completed. And East Mountain Road completed. Really what's left in uh, the Green Hills area uh, should be completed at the end of June. Camplain Road will be delayed uh, due to PSC&G work on uh, gas main replacements. Uh, Willow Road Phase 2 between Valinor and Hillsborough Road uh, is under NJDOT review and paving is planned for fall of 2020 or rollover to spring of 2021 if needed. So good job uh, by our engineering department getting everything in our, our finance department getting in our ducks in a row and we got everything done while nobody was on the road. So now they can use a nice new road to go to work one and if they can get back soon. 
Uh, the DPW is back in full swing as people have uh, noted the annual cleanup and drop off program along with many other infrastructure uh, repairs and maintenance items. The crack sealing program will ta be taking place in the near future. This is important maintenance uh, item helping prolong the life of our roadways by keeping damaged moisture out of the subsurface materials of the road. The town has accomplished a great deal of ditch maintenance this spring also to assure that the proper flow of water runoff uh, from the more rural road roadways. Uh, the department would also like to extend a thank you to the borough of Raritan, Raritan for donating a Mack garbage truck uh, to our township that they were going to put on public auction. This will be utilized to help our senior curbside pickups and clean communities programs uh, in the upcoming days. So thank you to uh, Raritan, the borough of Raritan. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the HBA uh, would like to recognize, recognize the significant financial loss and hardship occurred by our food establishment community due to the COVID-19 pandemic and restrictions placed upon their, their operations as a result due to the uh, new order uh, issued by our governor for outdoor dining being able to start next week. Um, we are offering a no-cost temporary dining permit. Uh, the application will be through the zoning department and will be available online uh, soon uh, on our website. I was talking to Anthony, the form has been approved. And uh, so essentially we just fill out this application. There'll be no cost so that we just know who's doing what they're doing. Um, please support our local businesses by utilizing on a nice spring or summer fall day. Sit outside. We've always wanted to have more outside dining. So if you want to take a bonus out of this whole thing, now you can sit outside and have dinner with your family uh, and enjoy getting out of the house. Uh, also, you can keep uh, up to date on other issues that are in the Experience Hillsboro, uh, Hillsboro for Business, and obviously today's Takeout Tuesday, as we always note, uh, and post it on the, our Facebook page, hashtag HBA Strong. Uh, a couple of small notes. Uh, obviously, uh, this one is a little regretful. I've been informed officially the Rotary Fair has been canceled for 2020. Uh, the vendor, uh, due to the COVID restriction, will be unable to have any fairs this year, not only ours, but so all these summer festivals have been canceled by this vendor. So we thank you all for your past uh, support, and we'll hope to see you again next year if uh, we're able to do fairs. But as of now, this year, it is canceled. And last note, as a little privilege, I'd like to extend a very happy birthday to my daughter Anastasia, who's 23 today. Part of being in this office is that you miss functions, and I'm sure you all know that. But uh, I'm proud of you, and uh, happy birthday. I'll see you later. Happy That's birthday, it. Anastasia. <laughs> happy birthday. Um, thank you, Deputy Mayor. A uh, couple of things from me. Uh, first, uh, I just wanted to thank the Interfaith Community Action Network of Somerset County uh, for organizing a virtual vigil uh, for justice and peace in memory of George Floyd and all lives that were lost in justice. They held that on Sunday. It was profoundly moving. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, all the individuals who spoke at that. It was a, uh, an, a great event uh, that was held virtually. And uh, again, I just want to thank the Interfaith Community Action Network for putting that on. I also want to thank Dr. Uh, Treblinski oh, from our middle school. Uh, him and uh, I believe it was seven students and I participated in a Zoom call to talk about um, a resolution we did a couple uh, weeks ago regarding gun violence. Uh, they, they wanted to talk about sort of our thoughts, what um, action they could take in a municipality like ours uh, regarding school safety, et cetera. Uh, this was an amazing group of students, so I just wanted to thank them uh, for allowing me to partake in, in their discussion. Uh, and I challenge them that they now have to come up with action items, a way to how they can make our community safer and all communities across the country. And I have every faith that they will be sending me an email shortly uh, with some of their ideas. So again, I just want to thank them uh, and thank the principal of the middle school for arranging that uh, event. Uh, as uh, everyone knows and was mentioned a few times, there has been new executive orders regarding COVID. Uh, the most recent executive orders regarding pools and, and things like that. We are using our uh, Reopen Hillsborough Task Force to get us as ready as possible, as quick as possible, to get make sure that Hillsborough can bounce back uh, from COVID quickly. Uh, we are already looking about how we can have people back into this meeting space. It was something we were discussing earlier, whether or not that's uh, legally allowed under the executive orders or not. But as soon as we can have the public back in here, we can't wait for that to happen. Uh, social distancing is still in place. Masks are still required. Uh, and you can visit the state's website. I believe it's just COVID-19 
www.nj.us uh, for the information about what the latest are. However, I am extremely pleased to report that as of right now, today, we have no new cases and we have no new uh, deaths related to COVID today. Uh, and we have another recovery. So although this is a, a slow, uh, slow build, I, I just want to thank everyone for doing their best uh, and I know it's been difficult and it has not been fun by any stretch uh, adhering to all the governor's executive orders. However, uh, it does seem like they are making a difference and I do hope that our numbers remain flat from this day forward. Um, just a quick update. Uh, I know I received in a couple inquiries uh, regarding uh, Apex and some trees that were located along Mountain View Road. Um, there was a uh, there were trees that were being taken down after some consideration between the owner of Apex and the municipality. Uh, it was agreed upon that all the existing trees are going to remain and the landscaping plan will be revised so that the new plantings will be positioned in a way to aid uh, the existing trees and not choke them out, uh, which was, I guess, an original concern. So I just wanted to give an update. Thank you for the emails I received on that. Um, and as you heard from Deputy Mayor Lapani, outdoor dining will be starting soon. Uh, this is just another step in the reopen process, and the task force that I previously uh, mentioned uh, will continue to meet every Thursday uh, in an effort to get us as quick, uh, as ready as possible to open back up. The Business Advocates Office and Health Department will continue to visit businesses and assist with guidance on the executive orders and required safety measures. Should you have any questions or concerns, please contact the Hillsborough Health Department at 908-369-5652 or the Business Advocates Office at 369-3533. Um, quick update on the bypass, and despite COVID-19 and a few minor operational issues, it is anticipated that the Route 206 bypass will remain on target for completion by the end of 2020. Um, so I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. I also want to thank the Raygrod family for donating uh, a Class of 2020 banner to honor our Hillsborough High School graduating class. Candice, her husband Paul, her children Kenzie, Jordan, and Abby uh, all came out and took a picture with Commitment Tocor. I believe it's up right now. Uh, that one is uh, on the corner of Beekman and Amwell. However, we're also going to be putting one on uh, to, uh, our municipal grounds here at the municipal building. And the Route 206 Firehouse was gracious enough to allow us to put one up there. So I also have one there as well. So again, thank you for that extremely generous personal donation uh, to honor our uh, high school students that are graduating this year. As always, you can stay connected with all events and more via the Friday e-newsletter. I believe we're moving that to Wednesday shortly. Uh, but right now we're doing three newsletters a week, but that will change. Uh, TV 29 and the Hillsborough YouTube channel showcase our meetings and the Hillsborough The Good Life episodes and Hillsborough alerts for traffic and emergency notifications. At this time, we're going to move to proclamations, and despite not being able to have any members of the public attend these meetings, we will bring forth awareness to related proclamations as we feel is appropriate. And first up this evening is one in memory of William Rocco Shields de, uh, de Gregorio. Uh, William Rocco Shields de Gregorio, I apologize, stepson of devoted Hillsborough Board of Education employee Kathy Major, passed away on Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020, at the young age of 11, after a long battle with pediatric cancer. Will loved sports, especially baseball, and even after particularly difficult surgery, removing most of his hip, and anticipated years of rehabilitation, he returned to the pitching mound in just six months. Will's favorite color was blue, which represented all his favorite sports teams, the New York Giants, the New York Rangers, and the New York Yankees. His favorite season was winter, and he loved sledding. Will's beautiful blue eyes, infectious smile, and giggle brained every room he entered and put all at ease around him. Will was the ultimate fighter and never gave up. He touched so many lives, and his strength, wit, smile, and love of life will live on and not be forgotten. Now, therefore, be proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, do hereby commend and honor William for his courage, <coughs> bravery, compassion, and spirit. And if you don't mind, if we could just take a quick moment of silence for Will. Thank you. Mayor, his mom might be on. Sure. Uh, do we want to? We could just open up the bridge for one second. I believe um, Kathy may be on. I don't know if she'd like to say anything. Um, Kathy, are you on the phone? All participants are now in interactive talk mode. Kathy, are you on the line? Kathy, are you on the phone? All participants are now. 
It doesn't seem so. We can we can go ahead and meet it. All participants are now okay. in listen only mode. <clears throat> Uh, now we're going to move on into a resolution for Pride Month. And whereas the month of June was designated Pride Month to commemorate the Stonewall Riots, which occurred in June of 1969, and are generally recognized as the catalyst of the LGBTQ uh, rights movement, and whereas the, Hillsborough town, the township of Hillsborough is a welcoming community and an acceptable place to live, learn, work, play, and raise a family, the Hillsborough Township lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community is a vital part of all fields and professions and contributes to a stronger community. And whereas Hillsborough Township is dedicated to fostering acceptance of all of its citizens and, pre and preventing discrimination and bullying based on sexual orientation and gender identity, our community is strengthened and by and thrives upon the rich diversity of ethnic, cultural, racial, gender, and sexual identities of all of our residents, all of which contribute to the vibrant character of Hillsborough. Now, therefore, we proclaim that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, to hereby recognize June as Pride Month and urge all residents to recognize the contributions made by members of the LGBTQ community and to actively promote the principles of equality and liberty. So that concludes our proclamations. Uh, we're going to move on to new business, uh, including public comment on matters not on the agenda this evening. Uh, so at this time... Budget presentation first? Or? No, we're gonna, the, the budget's going to come next. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, so we're going to... Um, did anyone send an email on an item that is not on the agenda this evening, Ms. Borak? Do you want me to open up the bridge first? To... Yeah, okay. Uh, first, we're going to go ahead and open up the bridge. So if you are a member of the public, if you can mute your line, if you are not uh, speaking first, that would be extremely helpful. Uh, also, if you could state your name and address for the record. And again, this is for items not on the agenda this evening. So. All participants are now in interactive talk mode. So at this time, if you could please state your name and address if you'd like to say something for the record. Quiet. Seeing none, if we could go ahead and mute that. All participants are now in listen-only mode. Thank you. Do we receive any emails? None. None? Not okay. On the agenda. Okay. Not related to the agenda. Thank you. Okay, uh, so now we're going to move on to our municipal budget. Each year, the preparation of the municipal budget creates the challenge of minimizing the impact on property taxpayers while providing the township departments with the funds necessary to deliver needed and expected services for our residents. This year, amid COVID-19, that challenge was even greater. It is through our continued diligence and dedication that we are able to introduce a municipal budget for the third year in a row that has a reduction to the municipal portion of your tax bill. In a moment, I will call upon our CFO, Nancy Costa, to make her a budget presentation. However, first, I would like to thank the full finance team, uh, liaison to finance, Kim Mabel and Gloria McCauley, our administrator, Anthony Ferrer, our CFO, Nancy Costa, and all of our uh, municipal department heads uh, for their hard work and diligence in preparation for 2020 uh, municipal budget. Um, I, I'd like to add one more thing. Uh, I think anyone who served on this township committee knows that for years we've been trying to make sure our budgets are uh, filled by one-time uh, gimmicks or things that we don't believe that are necessarily sustainable. Uh, I know that our colleagues in other municipalities right now are going through situations that because of loss of revenue, uh, relying on hotel and other uh, services like that that have an extremely, uh, it's, it's just devastating their budgets. We, we do not have a situation and because of our long-term planning, uh, we've been in a much better situation. So again, I want to thank our uh, CFO and our administrator, Anthony Ferreira, because uh, he has been planning for a COVID-style disaster for years in Hillsborough, requiring that our department heads take home uh, laptops and be prepared to work off-site at any moment. And uh, I think the budget is a reflection of just that preparedness and making sure that we're not a one-time um, sort of uh, uh, portion of the budget. So again, I just want to thank everyone who served on the uh, budget committee this year, or finance team. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to read the budget resolutions into the record. Uh, first, resolution one, authorizing the introduction of the 2020 municipal budget, setting the public hearing for July 14th, 2020. Uh, and resolution two, authorizing self-examination of the 2020 municipal budget. May I have a motion to approve the above mentioned budget resolutions? So moved. Second. Uh, any comments from the dais? Not yet. <laughs> None? Uh, any comments 
uh, from the floor, so we're going to open up the bridge. And we didn't receive any via All participants email. are now in interactive talk mode. Okay. Just a reminder, this is the introduction of the budget, and they'll still need a full hearing on July 14th. But is there any comments on line or, or via phone uh, regarding this resolution, <laughs> these two resolutions? <laughs> Seeing none, uh, if we could close the bridge, All and again, I would are now in listen only mode. encourage everyone, if you could please meet your lines. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, can we do a roll call, please? Committee Mendel Yes. Committee Woman Holmes. Yes. Committee Woman McCauley. Yes. Deputy Mayor Lapani. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Kata to begin the budget presentation. And after uh, presentation, I'll be happy to entertain any comments from the dais regarding the introduced budget. Let's go back this way. Thank you, Mayor Thompson, and welcome everyone to the 2020 municipal budget. The 2020 municipal budget totals 29,994,725 which is $172,000 less than the budget we introduced in 2019. It will be funded by 9933937 in anticipated revenues and a tax levy of $20,060,788. This will result in a municipal tax rate of 0.316 cents per $100 of assessed value, which is lower than the 2019 municipal tax rate. The tax levy and the state aid make up 78% of the revenues in this budget. Items such as licenses, permits, shared services, and court funds provide additional revenues. The township continues to pursue shared services in addition to the existing shared service agreements we have currently for court services and health officers. And we are looking into grant opportunities for every department within this township. The township was forced to take a very conservative approach when budgeting revenues this year in anticipation of lower revenues from several key line items, including the municipal court and the building department as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. The township continues to see increases in interest income as a result of the banking services agreement that we bid out in 2018. Should a municipality wish to increase their tax levy by more than the 2% cap, they could do so by adding additional costs of mandated pension contributions, debt service, and capital improvement funding. Those allowances would have totaled $26,213 this year. Since 2011, the township could have increased taxes by over $2.1 million dollars by using these exceptions, but chose never to do so. This year's tax le levy increase, once again, has stayed below the 2% allowable cap. In 2020, 27% of the budget expenditures will go towards public safety, with public works at 14% and our other departments at 15%, and insurance and benefits equating to 15% of our spending, which is flat with last year's spending. This chart shows the trend in the three major components of our tax bill, the school, the county, and the municipal. County and municipal taxes have stayed relatively level, but in the six-year period shown, school taxes have increased over six cents per hundred dollars of assessed value. And school taxes make up 66.5% of our total tax rate. County tax make up 17% and municipal taxes 13%. The township's rateable base increased for both assessed values from added new construction and the ongoing annual reassessment program. This provided a larger total assessed value over which the tax levy can be distributed, which contributed to the municipal tax rate decrease from 0.319 to 0.316 this year, making this our third consecutive year in which the municipal tax rate has decreased. Public hearing on this budget will be held on July 14th, and this full budget document will be available on the township's website tomorrow. Good. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues on the dais for any comments uh, before I, I might make a couple extra. Um, was there anyone on the dais who'd like to make a comment? Uh, Mayor, I'll just thank Ms. Costa for her ongoing vigilant work on our budgets as usual. And also, uh, Anthony Ferrer for utilizing uh, all the savings that, this, that he looks for in shared services and grants, et cetera. And nowhere else has it been more evident than this year when the monies aren't necessarily all going to be there. So this is the kind of forethought and responsible government that uh, you can see by uh, three straight years of a tax decrease amongst some troubled times that I'm proud to be part of. And, and thank you uh, again for all your work. Thank you. Um, just a couple comments from myself. I know Doug and I and Nancy had sat down and when we heard about COVID and all of the disasters that was bringing along with the situation and the pandemic, we really started to panic. And um, I think Nancy calmed our nerves when she had discussed with us that most of our revenues are continuing to come in, not all of them, but with the due diligence of the past years and the savings and paying down our debt, um, in a responsible manner, we are able to deliver this year's budget um, with such great news. I'm really, really, it was shocking um, for us to sit down and go through the numbers and have a relief with the fact that we can cover the budget this year. Um, unless we have some crazy, something that happens the next couple of months, this is just the introduction. We still have some work to do on going through some of the specifics. Um, but wanted to say thank you again to all of the staff here at the township, all the department heads, and especially our CFO for keeping on top of us and how we're spending our money and how we can save the taxpayer dollars as well. So really proud so far, and um, I'm sure it's going to stay about the same, hopefully. And I uh, wanted to say thank you to the mayor as well as participating in the budget uh, process this year and all of us um, for being diligent in following the last several years of um, delivering very cautious budgets. So. Thank you again to Nancy Costa, our CFO, and department heads, Anthony Ferreira, Pam, our clerk, and everyone who diligently tries to be very cognizant of our spending in the township. Thank you. Thank you, and I think I'll just add uh, one last thing. And I, you know, when uh, Committee Member McCauley and I are going into this as uh, COVID really started, I mean, that's when we started our yeah. budget process back in March, where we really start trying to look at what our key objectives are. Uh, for the next year, um, we had to look at our department's heads and say we, had, we need to start cutting back uh, out of these concerns. So uh, I, I'm very proud of the budget that's put before us. Um, I hope it meets acceptance from all my colleagues up here at our next meeting. Um, with that, that's all my comments. Do we need to open it up to public? Mayor, might I, can I? Just oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Just, just real quick. Um, I, you know, sometimes it, it sounds like we're, it, it's a little cliche that we say we're you know, we're trying to plan for today and for the future. We're trying to take conservative approaches in, in the budget process. We're trying to conduct good governance. Uh, and I don't, mean, I don't mean us. I mean the entire uh, the municipal government here, uh, led by our administrator. And uh, Ms. Casa, thank you for your, your finance stuff. But when, when you end up in a situation like we're experiencing now, um, you see where those measures um, become most fruitful because we're in a space now where we don't have devastating impacts or we don't have uh, a lack of funding because we didn't put away for a rainy day uh, or we spent ourselves into oblivion. Um, and now we have the, the it's evident in, in budgets like this where that becomes uh, most meaningful. So I just want to thank all of the employees um, and our municipal workers for working to make sure that when events like we're experiencing now happen, um, that we're able to withstand it. So I, I appreciate the, the good government um, that our employees, our leaders here undertake every day. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the dais? Good. Okay. Um, we'll open it up to the floor. If you could just open up the bridge, if there's any questions on the presentation. All participants are now in interactive talk mode. Uh, As a reminder, if you have a comment, please state your name and address for the record. And again, this budget document will be on our website uh, early tomorrow morning. Um, any comments uh, on the phone? Seeing none, if we can mute the line.
All participants are now in listen-only mode. Okay. Uh, moving on to introduction of new ordinances. Um, 2020-18, an ordinance to exceed the 2020 municipal budget appropriation limits and establish a cap bank for further consideration at a public hearing will be held on July uh, 14th, uh, 2020. Under state budget law, the unused portion of the appropriations cap, which is different than the tax levy cap, may be reserved to be available in the next two years. Each year since 20, 2002, Hillsborough has been able to reserve some funds in the cap bank. The cap bank has no impact on our taxes. May I have a motion to introduce this ordinance? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Mandelcor? Yes. Mayor Woman Holmes? Yes. Mayor Woman Holly? Yes. Secretary Lapani? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Uh, next up this evening, we have our annual Wildlife uh, Commission presentation. I believe Ms. Borak, our township clerk, will be providing the overview. I just want to thank uh, our Wildlife Commission, headed by uh, Bob, uh, Dr. Bob Matros, Tom Ross, and Officer Mazaros uh, for all their hard work on this commission. So, uh, Ms. Bora? As they plan each year, safety is the number one priority. Um, since the inception of the program in 20, uh, 2004, the Wildlife Management Commission is proud to announce and uh, have that they have a 100% safety record for all the hunters involved. Um, the above information is gathered from the surveys that are returned in each year. 54 surveys this year returned in, which represents 90%. Um, 88 uh, deer were harvested from the uh, township property. 16 via firearms, 72 via archery, 29 were males, 59 were females. In days hunted, that came out to be 882 days of hunting during that period of time represented um, by the sum of all the hunters. Oh, mm -hmm. nope, this one got a little floopy, sorry, I don't know what happened, but um, the numbers for uh, the deer mark during car automobile collisions uh, have gone dramatically down since the inception of the program in 2004 where there was 333 recorded accidents with um, motor vehicles and, and deer down to 106 reported in 2019. Um, over the course of the whole period, it's been 4,252 accidents. So um, despite uh, all the other increases that are happening in town, we are seeing the deer collision as a result of the success of this program being reduced. Donated deer, a big portion of what they do in the um, deer management program is they donate the venison to the food, uh, food bank program. Um, there was 23 deer donated in process, which represented about 900 pounds of meat to help the, hung the hungry. Um, recommendations for the 2020-21 hunting season um, include keeping up with that helping the hungry venison food bank program. They use the permit fees to offset the processing fees of the meat and to continue invite, to invite the New Jersey Fish and Wildlife to the annual hunter orientation meeting to provide um, tree stand safety and general hunting guidelines and safety to help and maintain the program's 100% safety record, which they are so proud of. Um, that's all she wrote. Thanks, Grant. All right, thank you for, uh, for that. Uh, next up, we're going to be moving on to our public hearing. Um, this is a public hearing on 2020-16 ordinance amending chapter 188 land use and development article 5 districts and standards section 18813.4 gv green village district section 18813.5 town center district and adding a new section 18813.8 multifamily inclusionary district mfi d1 for the consideration of public hearing will be held uh, today uh, as was uh, as i mentioned in uh, two letters out to the public I received a considerable um, uh, email from residents concerning this ordinance. Uh, so what I've asked my colleagues, or, or what I'm going to be asking my colleagues, that although this is a public hearing, we are going to defer all comment uh, on this, and we're going to take it up at a meeting on June 23rd. We are adding a meeting to our agenda uh, to, to hear this. Um, after, uh, I really, I thank uh, Committeeman Delcor and Deputy Mayor Lapani. Uh, they approached me after uh, some difficulties during the planning board hearing, and a couple of residents said that they had trouble at hearing on the planning board hearing. So we're going to be exploring a different 
way to participate for that next meeting that'll be up and running details on that shortly um, however uh, again at this time we are going to have to open up the meeting because we legally said we were going to uh, but uh, our planner is not on the line to answer any questions and we're not going to, uh, to answer any questions and defer that into our next meeting as promised on June 23rd uh, so I will not be reading the entire ordinance into the record at this time uh, since we're going to be again discussing this on June 23rd um, so just to be clear, I have to make a motion to open it up, but then not take a vote. Is that correct from my attorney and from You're going Pam? to motion to open the public hearing, and you're going to um, just not take a vote correct, on it. Correct, and we're going to carry it to the 23rd. So okay. motion to open followed by a request to continue. Okay. So uh, may I have a motion to open the public hearing on Ordinance 2020-16. So move, Mayor. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, is there any comments on the dais? Seeing none, uh, is there any comments from the floor keeping in mind that we are delaying this hearing uh, and creating a special meeting on June 23rd to answer questions and to discuss this? If we could open the bridge. All participants are now in interactive health mode. If there's anyone on the line who would like to comment on this ordinance, uh, again, we are holding it into the next meeting. I have a comment. I, I wish you would have told us that we've been online for an hour waiting to be heard. If you already knew that this was not going to take place tonight, you should have at least sent, sent us all an email letting us know that this was going to happen. Right. Could you state your name and address for the record, please? My name is Maria Palmer at 34 Huey Lane. Thank you. Uh, we sent out an email uh, yesterday uh, and an email again today. However, uh, if you would like, if you visit our website, there is a section for e-news. If you could put in your email address, and we can make sure that you will continue to get all the latest updates about Hillsborough Township via there. But I do apologize uh, that uh, you didn't get that notice in advance. Okay. Um, any other comments? If not, uh, we're going to close the bridge. Seeing none, if you could close that. Thank All you. participants are now in listen-only mode. So at this time, I am not going to take a motion on this. However, uh, I am going to uh, defer this until the June 23rd meeting that we're adding. It will not be re-noticed. However, uh, it will certainly be on our agenda. But again, it will not be re-noticed. That just means you won't be getting a letter in the mail if you live Do we need a motion to continue? Yeah. Well, Yes, take a I motion think already, I think that was already done. Now we just need a roll call on it, right? Uh, let, let me just be clear. Uh, I, I would like to entertain a motion to uh, carry this until June 23rd without any additional notice. Is that good? So yes. moved. I guess I moved. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Committee woman, uh, Committee Woman Delcor. Yes. Committee Woman Holmes. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Stephen Mayor Lapani. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. And thank you, everyone, uh, for accommodating us uh, on that, that we will be creating a meeting for that hearing, so I do appreciate it. Uh, moving on to resolutions, uh, there are 10 of them this evening. However, I would like to take number eight uh, separately on the consent agenda, if everyone is okay with that. Mm -hmm. We are? Okay. Uh, I'm just going to read the consent of this one into the record and do a separate vote on that. Whereas recent tragedies in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and throughout our nation have again shown a light on systemic racism and the current and historic disparate, uh, disparate treatment of African Americans and black people in our country, and whereas we are saddened at the murders of Ahmed Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and countless others, and Hillsborough Township condemns all forms of racism and supports and protects all its residents, no matter their ethnicity, race, faith, sexual orientation, or gender, and whereas Hillsborough Township is proactive regarding this sensitive topic, and on January 28, 2020, issued a proclamation in honor of the National Day of Racial Healing, and whereas we support and commit to calling out hate and discrimination when we see it and help promote our core American value that no one should be targeted because of their identity, and whereas violence and hate crimes create fearful and unstable communities, and whereas public servants, we have an even greater responsibility to speak out against racism, discrimination, bias, and hatred 
because when the unacceptable becomes the norm in our society, human rights for all are threatened. And whereas Hillsborough Township affirms and commits to protect the rights of people, and whereas hate will not be tolerated and we will stand together to fight and form any form of bigotry, discrimination, or hate in speech or in action against any group from whatever that source. Now therefore, be resolved by the Township of Hillsborough County of Somerset State in New Jersey that the Hillsborough Township Committee wholeheartedly condemns the actions and injustices that have again brought division and crisis in our community and across the United States and that Hillsborough Township recommits to work on ways in which we can engage our communities to address and uproot institutionalized racism and implicit bias and offer spaces for dialogue, trainings, and understanding. Therefore, be resolved and reaffirmed that Hillsborough Township will maintain constant vigilance with regard to its own public safety policies and actions and do everything in its power to make certain that Hillsborough is and will remain a welcome a community opposed to acts of racism and bigotry. Um, may I have a motion? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Seeing none, uh, if we could open up the bridge for comments uh, from the floor or audience. All participants are now in interactive talk mode. Uh, does anyone have a comment on resolution number eight? All participants are now Thank in listen-only mode. Uh, if we could do a roll call, please. Committee Mr. Delcor. Yes. Committee Woman Holmes. Yes. Committee Woman McCauley. Yes. Seven Mary Lapani. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. And personally, I want to thank each one of my colleagues who did reach out to me separately. Uh, all of us individually reach out to me on this uh, to make sure that we had something on our agenda. It's, uh, it's nice that we could do that um, all together on this. So I do appreciate it. So thank you. Uh, may I have a motion to, let me ask, does anyone want to take anything besides number eight? Separately. Seeing none, uh, may I have a motion to approve the above resolutions, one through seven and nine through ten. So moved. Second. Okay. Are there any comments from the dais? Uh, I just know, I know it was commented out earlier. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, everyone that worked to get the uh, outdoor establishment, uh, you know, getting the processing and the issuance of those zoning permits done quickly. I know our business community is anxious to uh, implement them, and I, I know there are many of us that uh, would love to sit at one of our local restaurants and uh, and have a meal. So I look forward to that. Definitely. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Th yes. Thank you to everyone who got that fast track so we could get that ready to go to help our businesses. Uh, any other comments on uh, from the dais? Seeing none, if we could open up the bridge. All participants are now in interactive talk mode. Are there any other comments from individuals online uh, concerning agenda items 1 through 7 and then agenda item 9 through 10? Seeing none, if we could go ahead and close the bridge. All participants are now in list-only mode. All right. Um, if we could have a roll call on that, please. Raymond Zalcor. Yes. Raymond Holmes. Yes. Committee Woman McCauley. Yes. Deputy Mayor Lepani. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. We have a motion to approve claims list 2020-11. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? If we could open up the bridge. All participants are now in interactive talk mode. Are there any uh, individuals online who are on the phone, I should say, that would like to comment on the bill list or claims list? Seeing none, if we could close that. All participants are now in listen-only mode. All right. Uh, roll call, please. Committee Woman McCauley? Yes. Committee Woman Holmes? Yes. <laughs> Committee Woman McCauley? Yes. Deputy Mayor Lapani? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. Move. That one everyone jumps for. Uh, can, we see, can I have one of you give a second? Second. Thank no. you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.